Welcome back to the dead ball area. This week we're going to have a look at Italy's defeat to England in the Six Nations. We're going to start with their attack against England. And to understand how off the pace Italy were in this game, let's quickly look at some possession driven stats. Both teams had similar kicking stats. Italy kicked from hand 24 times to England's 21. Italy also had attacking possession 39 times to England's 38. However, Italy had the chance to play from 33 attacking platforms compared to England's 21. And whilst that seems good, what it means is that on approximately 17 occasions, England were given possession in play compared to six times for Italy. Now that's quite a broad number, and of course there's more to it than just the numbers. But what is important to understand is that for the vast majority of those, England were then able to make a decision around what happened next in the game. In contrast, when England gave Italy possession, it was predominantly dead ball, meaning England got to reset. And that's important because this constant surrendering of playable position is in keeping with what I think is one of Italy's biggest problems, their attacking strategy, and importantly, how their lack of cohesion impacts on it. But let's start at the beginning of the game. The opening attack is interesting because straight away we can see not everyone is on the same page. Italy play off the top with the aim of beating England to the game line and playing on the front foot. However, first we can see Garbisi and Moy flatten up so early that there's only one actual option, Zanon, and England can drift straight out onto him. The poor pass checks Zanon's run and Holofia is so flat on him that by the time they take contact, he almost overshoots. And as such, when he latches on, it adds nothing to the contact. Timing is completely off. What should be their primary carry to get them over the game line is stopped well before it, putting England in the driving seat. Now, Italy run another phase left with Brex carrying into contact. It again stops on or around the game line. No real metres made. The option to then play the same side into the five metre channel sends the ball down a blind alley. And Oani cuts back before he and Lucchesi are dragged down. A third ruck is formed and still behind the game line. This time Varney decides to box kick and it's charged down by Dombrant before the ref brings us back for a penalty. So, three phases. All are ineffective in that they never make ground or soak up defenders. And that last point is important. If you're not making yards, you need to be soaking up defenders to create space. This attack does neither. A further point is that all of this is done under penalty advantage. So the question we have to ask is, why kick at this point of the attack? It seems a strange decision to run three phases from right to left and then to try to kick tactically into the left corner, as opposed to trying to work a few more phases or putting in an attacking kick or a kick to compete. So hold that thought. We again see this lack of penalty awareness later in the game, at 48 minutes, where Garbisi chips the ball dead under a penalty advantage when it would have been much better to run through the phases and keep attacking, especially as they're not going to kick for goal from the ensuing penalty. This indicates to me there's no obvious protocol around playing under penalty advantage, or they've not understood it. And at this point, in these two moves, neither Varney or Garbisi know what their next options should be, or what they're trying to achieve, and the kick is a reaction to that. And this brings us back to the question of cohesion. There's nothing inherently wrong with the Italians' attacking structures, what is telling is they struggle to use them in an effective way. Now, as we saw in the initial attack, Zanon and Varni are not quite connecting. And we yet again see this at 28 minutes, this time with Varni, Zanon and Garbisi. Italy catch and fake the set with Holofia acting as the dummy halfback, who then feeds Varni, who then feeds Garbisi, who then feeds Zanon. Now look how Zanon has already overrun Garbisi, to the point he has to stop and then go again, allowing England to again stop him well behind the game line. This whole little sequence of play seems overly complicated and difficult to execute for what is essentially a very simple act. Hit the game line, set up a second point to play off. It takes Italy three passes and they could simply have punched right over the game line with one pass direct to Zanon. Why play through Varney? Why not hit Zanon straight from the line out? Why not go to Zanon from Varney, cutting out Garbisi? It just slows everything down with Zanon getting hit behind the game line, all the forwards are late to the next run. So they have to come back and around a deeper ruck. So despite the ruck ball being relatively quick, they simply aren't in position to either carry or clean the next ruck, and a solo, isolated runner, Padovani, is turned over on the floor. Again, this lack of cohesion between the midfield kills any momentum the Italians would have hoped to generate and leads to the ball being turned over. To further illustrate how disorganised Italy's attack is, Let's jump to 51 minutes on the game clock. Italy again plays at the top, 
into the midfield, sent on support, again overruns and offering himself as a hardline option instead of as a cleaner. Now watch Italy's forwards trying to organise themselves into a shape off nine. No one's taking charge. No one's in control. Multiple players are offering themselves visually as the carrier, indicating they're free to take the ball. No one's leading until Cecciarelli takes charge. Again, the support is disorganised and Curry is able to slow and disrupt and that in turn allows Itoje to pick his target, blitz out the line and rip the ball. Let's quickly pause and talk about Garbisi, as he more than anyone illustrates the issues with Italy. Garbisi is a good player holding Pollard out to Montpellier's side. But on Montpellier, he's playing outside Reinach, Aspazize or Palagou. All the nines who run the game. Garbisi is able to elect his interventions. The system works for and protects him. With Italy, clearly that isn't happening. And that lack of an obvious game plan puts him in the firing line. To me, Italy is a team struggling to find balance in the game. Statistically, Italy made five line breaks, with Mori making one and Zanon and I only two each. But in truth, even when they did attack wide, the movement was extremely lateral with very little penetration. At 13 minutes, we can see Halafia pop the ball to Varney, who simply passes the ball to Garbisi, who then looks up to find no backdoor option and Zanon is too deep to carry, so he passes to Brex. We can see England aren't even looking at Zanon, he simply isn't a threat. Brex shovels the ball onto Mori, who's shepherded by three England players. Now Italy recycle and play a few phases, two infield and then Varney brings the ball back. Now sure, Italy makes ground, but it takes them time to do that, and that allows England to regroup, set the defence, and the end result is a heavily concussed null, turns the ball over, and they clear to touch. At 24 minutes, we also see some more of this lateral movement deep behind the line. Italy do amazingly well and turn the ball over. But rather than kicking with momentum and putting more pressure on England, they play and take the ball to the edge. First of all, let's look at Italy's alignment and how deep it is they pass laterally. Look at all the space England make as they come forward. So when the ball gets to Arnie, England can just go soft in defence because they have all this space to work in. And they can make a soft tackle without conceding much ground or resources, and it's just safe defence. As Italy play the next phase, the carry is again off the first receiver and deep, and it ends with Lucchesi getting tackled. But off the next phase, a lovely little grubber kick through from Garbisi sets Arnie on his way. But now let's watch off the next phase. Italy have got quick ball, yet they just shuffle the ball laterally and deep behind the line. Then this big missed pass from Garbisi just allows England to stay alive in defence and Smith can back off and take Mori into touch. Could Mori have worked in field? Yeah, absolutely. But the point here is England aren't stressed. They aren't in panic. They aren't trying to shut this down even when turned off fast ball. They're just in control because the line is not engaged. Of course, Italy did some good things. This chip through at 14 minutes is a wonderful piece of attacking play. But devoid of ideas, it then becomes the default go-to for much of Italy's attack. And it's often just wasting the ball. We already flagged the kick under advantage at 48 minutes. But at 4 minutes off a scrum, Garbisi simply kicks the ball in goal on the blind side. It's a kick to nothing, simply waste possession of first phase. Then again at 58 minutes, Garbisi kicks the ball straight into touch. At 67 minutes, Garbisi chips over the defence, but ultimately gives the ball back to England. Now, it's easy to blame Garbisi for kicking the ball away, but you can see the frustration on his face, and this, in my opinion, is a 10 that just doesn't know what his options are in attack, or simply isn't connecting with his 12 and 13, and playing off the cuff. And as such, he's making 50-50 decisions. Now, for me, Italy need to return to the basics, which are build around a solid set piece. Italy lost three scrums and three lineouts, so there's room for improvement. Play a more territory orientated game so they can slow it down and try to create scoring opportunities with the boot. Now, slowing the game down is often seen as negative, but it means you can be more accurate rather than fast and loose, and speed will come with accuracy. They simply need to get themselves in positions where they can squeeze penalties out and get points on the board, and there's no shame in that. It's a great foundation. In two games, they've only created three points from penalties. Whilst against France, they conceded six points and against England, multiple scoring opportunities. That's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. Please remember to like and subscribe to stay up to date and help the channel grow. And remember to check out the Dead Ball Area website for written analysis supporting these videos.